Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm so happy to see you this evening in the building. We're not on Zoom. I get to see your faces. I get to hug you. Um, so that's a blessing. Um, like I mentioned earlier, these past seven, eight days have been quite eventful in New York. Um, so we're definitely glad to be here. We want to praise God. Um, so the main point of tonight's program is just praise and worship. That is the main focus. We're just here to praise God. We've just went through the first quarter of the year, first three months. We're like already into the second quarter of the year. And we just want to praise God for bringing us this far already. Um, so we just want everyone to just get into that mode to just allow God to be with you, just meditate, just, we're just here to worship. So I'm very happy to have you here. Um, at this moment, we're going to have a prayer with um, our youth leader, Ruth Milius, and then Sister Karen is going to take over. So thank you. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to please rise so we can do our opening prayer. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Kind and gracious Father, Lord, we come before your throne of grace. We come into your house of worship, dear Father. First and foremost, we want to thank you for allowing us to see another Sabbath day. We want to thank you for your grace and your mercies. We want to thank you for those that came here today to worship you, to open together and, and to give glory and honor to your name, dear Father. As we come into your house, we lay before you all of our angst, all of our pains, all of our doubts, all of our worries, all of our troubles, whatever they may be, dear Father. We lay them at your feet, for we know that if we bring it to you in, with intention, dear Father, there is nothing that you can not break. There are no chains that you cannot break. There are no trials that you cannot help us to get over, dear Father. There is nothing that is beyond your scope, dear Lord. And so we pray for each and every person here. I do not know what they have brought before you, dear Father, but I pray that you will show yourself strong in their lives. I pray for those that are on their way, those that are going to minister to you, dear Father, and to all those that are here, and those who could not make it for whatever reason. Dear Father, we pray for um, our coordinator, Jenny, who put this together. We pray that you continue to be with her. Bless her, dear Father, guide her. Help her in her ministries and help her to continue to do your work on this earth, dear Father. And as we go through this night, I pray that each and every person here leaves this place unburden, that each and every person here leaves this place with a blessing, that each and every person here leaves here knowing that you are God, and without you, nothing is impossible, and when we bring things to you, everything is possible, dear Father. I ask that you be with us. I ask that anything that is not of you be removed from tonight's program, and that your name be glorified and honored. We ask you all this, not because we have any merit, dear Father, but because of your Son who died on Calvary's cross. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. It's so funny, you th Ruth and Johnny and Eli. <laughs> I used to go to Pathfinders here. I haven't been here in years, that's so crazy. But happy Sabbath Church. Everybody's so quiet. They didn't call me to be here for you to be quiet. I don't know why Yancey's in the back so quiet. Happy Sabbath Church. Okay, we're gonna have Horeb come up and sing, but before they come up and sing, did everyone get that white paper? That prayer paper, no one got it. They said Jemima was walking around giving it out. You have it? She's in the back, she's waving her hand. Did everyone get one? No one doesn't have one? Okay, I have like a quick task for you. Can everyone get a And then on the second one, right? No? This is, a t this is a real tough crowd. I thank God I'm a nurse and not in comedy. <laughs> um, no. I want you to write on the second one, God, do with, do with me as you will. Because I know for a fact on the first one, either we wrote a complaint or a desire. But I'm for sure no one wrote, God, do with me as you will. So everyone's going to get a second one because in intercessory prayer, we're going to pray over that. And I really want everyone to get that opportunity to let God do with them as he wills. Okay, so now we're gonna have Horeb come up and then I'll be back and hopefully it's a better crowd. <laughs>
Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. It is a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Um, I'm going to be very transparent with you guys. I'm a little nervous. I'm usually always nervous when it's time for me to sing, but I know the God that I serve. I know I serve a good God. I know I serve a mighty God, and he deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. So if you guys don't want to worship, that's fine, but I know we will be worshiping in the house of the Lord. Amen? So the first song is My Name is Victory. If you guys don't know it, that's fine, but we're going to learn it today. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. I see there's more people. Good. Before it was a tough crowd. I don't think I introduced myself, by the way. My name is Karen. You can call me Kay. That's what they call me at work. But I'm so grateful to be here. Did everyone get this paper, though? I know that there's more people. Did everyone get this white piece of paper? Not everyone. There's more, Jemima? I think it's more so this. No one on this side needs this? Okay, so then it's definitely more so this side. She's gonna come give you that paper. It's a paper because we have a um, prayer box. I don't know why. I'm so nervous and I'm, I'm nervous. I feel like I'm out of breath. <laughs> but I'm not out of breath. <laughs> but um, this is a high pass to gas mirror. This, this paper is for the prayer box, but I know you're gonna write your desires and I know you're gonna write your complaints. So before you got here, I had instructed everyone, even if you can't get a second paper, but if you can write it on the other side, God, let your will be done in my life because it's very easy for us to make complaints and it's very easy for us to ask God a whole bunch of things as if he's a genie in a bottle, but it's so much better to say, God, just let your will be done because God sees the annoying coworker. God sees that you wanna get into that program. God sees that you wanna get out of that program. God sees that you want that job. God sees that that boss is annoying. God sees it all. I promise you, all you have to do is to let your will be done. But before we go into another um, praise team and another beautiful performance, which can we give another round of applause for Horeb? I mean, it was beautiful. Sam did an amazing job. Everyone on the team did an amazing job. But today, for this next section, I need two volunteers. Just two. This is really a tough crowd, my goodness. I really just need two volunteers. I'm looking at Yansley like, are you going to come up for me? Please. Thank you. Can I get a female volunteer? Rachel, is that Moran at the choir back there? All the females are putting their head down. Can you give me a volunteer, please? Just need a female volunteer. Just one. You're going to sit. Don't worry. You're, gonna, you're not going to stand. I get it. We're tired. We had a hard day. But you're going to sit. Just need a one female volunteer. Just one. I mean, the next part of the service really can't go on without a female volunteer. I just, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. She always gonna put that foot down. I know that's right, amen. Amen. Okay, the two of you can sit down. Pick a seat, any seat. 
you ready? Because we're just going to play Bible Bowl. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Are you guys ready? I'm sorry, I didn't get your name beautiful. Taisha. Hansley, you want to introduce yourself? Or should everyone know you? They should all know you by now. They should all know you by now. Okay, so we have Taisha and we have Brother Yan. Okay, so we're going to do our first question. It's Bible Bowl. It should be real fun and interesting. Are we ready? Don't help them. I can see the crowd. I can't see them, but I can see the crowd. So just raise your hand, the two of you, at any time when you feel like you know the answer. Okay? What is the most sold book in the entire world? Yes. That's one point for the boys. Come on, girl. That's one point for the boys. Because in this, in this church, we know there's only two genders. Okay. <laughs> Who baptized Jesus? I'm giving y'all easy questions. That's one point for the girl. That's one point and one point. Okay. Where did Jesus grow up? Yep. That's another point for the boys. That's two points for the boys. What sea did Jesus calm in the storm? What sea? I hear whispers. What sea did Jesus calm in the storm? Yes, it was. It's two for two. That's two for two. How many plagues did God send? God. No. You're close, though. I'm not against you going again. I'm not going to make it difficult. How many plagues? Okay, if you don't know how many, Rachel, you are going to get your whole church disqualified. <laughs> you know, if you don't know how many plagues, just give me the name of, or describe two plagues, two types of plagues that went down. Go ahead. I know you play good, but I can't hear her. <laughs> what happened? Locust and the angel of death. Okay, that's good. So that's, I think, three. You have now? Three for two? Okay. What does the word gospel mean? Mm-hmm. No. No. What does the word gospel mean? Yes, that's four for two. That is four for two. All right, let's, get, let's make it a little harder now. Well, this, this is the last one that's easy, but who was killed by their brother? Oh, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Who was killed by their brother? Go ahead, Yansley. Cain, Cain. Wait, Cain killed his brother. Uh-huh. What was the brother? Abel. There we go. We're not going to make it hard. So that's four for three. Right? I don't have a thing to keep track. Okay. What were, it's going to get a little harder now, unless you want to switch out and give it to another person. Would, you have the opportunity would, to, switch like to switch out. Don't switch it out to Rachel, because we know she knows all the answers. Don't pick Rachel. Yeah, Lori? Okay, she's going to switch sister. out. Can I switch out too? You got to pick someone. Find someone who's willing to switch out with you. I got Kenny. I knew you were going to pick Kenny. Kenny, Kenny going to hold it down. <laughs> Come on, Kenny. Huh? If what? That's good. Let's bring That's Kenny and Rachel fair. up. That's like Kenny Kenny Rachel. switching me out Let's go. Come on, Kenny. Brother Kenny. Don't go up I'm there. sorry. I know you just got Don't here. Don't go up there. All right, Rachel. 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 Well, I don't Rachel. underestimate Lori. Lori probably good. That's not crazy. Uh, huh? They said it can't be Kenny. Oh, I'm sorry. Sister Evie said I can't pick Kenny. Why can't I, I pick Kenny? I'll keep, I'll keep going. No, Rachel can come, I said. Oh, Kenny can come, because Rachel can come. Okay, Kenny, come on. Come on, Kenny. Why are you going back to your seat, Kenny? Come on. I'm ready for you. These questions is going to get real tough. And uh, you know what? I'm happy you came up. Don't, don't feel scared. Don't feel scared. <laughs> okay, we're doing so good. Rachel, I will disqualify her. You have been shouting the answers. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Ready for the first question? No. Uh, you could either put your hand up or just, uh, you have mics now, which thank you for, where, I don't know where he went, but thank you for the yes. young man of horror who brought the mics. Um, so you can either speak into the mic or raise your hand, honestly. I can just hear the voices. So, what were Jesus' last words on the cross? It is finished. Oh. Actually, it's not, but 
nonetheless, you are really fast. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Father, into your hands I place my spirit. Jesus. Maybe we didn't need Rachel. You're good. You're right. You're right. That one is, that is the answer. Okay. Oh, that was the right answer. Amen. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's we have one. We, we're going to switch the board now because it's one zero. Okay. Mercy. What woman in the Bible had five husbands? Um, the woman of, um, can you just speak to my At the well. <laughs> the woman at the well. Does anyone have, okay, the woman at the well is two. Can you give me a location? Um, Jericho. Well, In Samaria. Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's one for one. One for one. Already. Is this, a, this a team thing? Is this like a side by side? Or? No, as soon as you're ready, just speak. Just oh, speak okay. into the mic if you know the answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, am I repping this side? Or is it like. No, oh, you're not oh, actually. Oh. 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 Maranatha is just cheating. They oh. all just on one side. Cheating. That's it. We're not cheating. Maranatha is just cheating. All right. Lord of mercy. Alrighty. When the Roman soldiers pierced Jesus in the side with a spear, what came out? Water, Water and blood. blood. Oh. <laughs> okay, Gasmer said it's a tie. It's not a new. <laughs> so that means you have two, two and two. It's a tie. Okay. Two and two. Lord of mercy. Water. Okay. Water was in how many pots that Jesus turned into wine? So in short, how many pots did Jesus turn into wine? Six. Seven. Kenny is oh. right. So it's two for three. Okay. okay. <laughs> you got a couple more questions left. We got a couple more questions it left. It was a guess. <laughs> okay. And to how many pieces was Jesus' seamless garment cut? Four. I'm going to be honest with you. When, when the Bible bowl portion came up, I didn't even know that. I was like, oh, sorry, that. Lord. Got to read it. Kenny was right. Kenny is right. So that's four for two now. Yes. In what book and chapter of the Bible, do we find Jesus' high priestly prayer? Um, what is it? Oh, go ahead. You, you think you know? I want to get, would you like me to give a hint? Matthew. No. Is it in John? Yes. John. Pick a chapter. John. Just pick a, it's in, girl, the answer is correct. You is not. Oh. <laughs> pick a chapter. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh. She got it. She don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> she don't got it. <laughs> pick a chapter. Can you pick a chapter? John 16. No. Sorry. You're very, very close, though. 17? Yes. <laughs> what is, so that's a three for four? Am I correct? Three for four? Okay. What is the shortest verse in the Bible? And Jesus wept. Well. I need you actually to tell me the location. I'm sorry, I wasn't specific. I'm sorry, I wasn't that specific. But I will hint you, it's in the last book where the other answer was, John. Mm -hmm. just, just pick a chapter. Damn, John 11. <laughs> nah, uh-uh, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, you're going to get her to lose a point. <laughs> that. that is null and void. That point is null and void. If we're cheating, we're going to lose a point. So it's still four and... Three. Four, three. four and three or four and four now? Four and three. Mm. Good. Name the two sisters whom Jesus loved. Mary, Mary and, Mag and Martha. Oh, Mary and Martha. Oh, no, no, yeah, Mary and Martha. She's right. Okay. That's it, Mary Magdalene. So it's four and four now. Yeah. Who persuaded their daughter to ask for the head of John the Baptist? Uh oh. Who persuaded their daughter? Um, the, yeah. The, the wife father or the mother? I'm no, sorry. no, no. It, Herodias. Herodias's daughter. King Herod? Or my mm -hmm. Herodias' daughter. Yes. Yeah, that's no, right. All right, that's five for four. Okay, which woman greeted the infant Jesus in the temple? Oh, Anna. Anna. An oh. Yeah. That J Kenny got it right. So it's five for four. Okay. Um, who was the woman out of whom Jesus cast seven devils? Mary. What Mary Magdalene? I mean, you're right. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, Mary Magdalene. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's six for four. Huh? No, he said Mary, and then I said, huh? And he said Magdalene. He got it. He got it. He got it. Ra Rachel, you could have been here. <laughs> Shoot. Alrighty. Who said Eli, Eli, Lama Jesus. Saba oh, Lord. Amen. I didn't even finish the question. The question is not done. And what does it mean? Um, Father, Father, unto you. Uh, no, Father. No. Whoa. Kenny, you want to go? 
Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Father, why have you forsaken me? Say it again. Why have you forsaken me? Okay. So that should be five for five? I think so. Okay. <clears throat> the title written above Jesus' cross said, Jesus of King Nazareth, King. I am not done, baby girl. I am not. I am not. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> you want the languages? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> King of the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> the title written Not above angry. Jesus' cross said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, name the three languages that the title was written in. Hebrew. You have to get he all three. Hebrew? You have to give me all three. Okay. Hebrew. Roman. I'm waiting for all three. And... Um, Latin. That's crazy. No. It's not Latin? It's not Latin? You said Hebrew, Roman, and, and Latin. Greek and no. Greek? Yeah, there you go. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Yeah. So you got it. Okay. Six for five. The Apostle Peter was known by three names. What were they? Peter, um, si Simon, and... Simon, Peter, and Rock? And you said Rock? Yeah. Petros? No. No? Mm. Whoa. What? Kephas? Son of... Mm -hmm. Oh. What translation were you using? <laughs> well, you both, gave me, you both gave me one name. It's three names I need. Okay. Simon, Peter. Mm -hmm. That's one name? That's one name? I'm asking you, is that one name? I'm no, asking that. Yeah, Simon, Simon is one. And then Peter. Peter and then, then Kephas. No. What? We missing what? It's Simon, Peter, and then it's Simon, and then Kephas. That so that would be the three. I know it's like you, I know, but that's, okay. that's like literally the answer. This is how they wrote it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> According to Matthew, who were Jesus, Simon, Judas, and James? His disciples? It's actually really an easy question. Friends. Hold on, say that one more time. According to Matthew, who were Jesus, Simon, Judas, cousins. and James? If friends. you were putting Jesus, Simon, Judas, and James together, what would you say? Like, if you saw them, what would you say? His brothers? Yes. Oh, oh, my fault. <laughs> I, I call them different He said disciples. Oh. Okay. Who was laughed? Oh, sorry. That would make it six for five, right? I think so. Yeah? Are we good? Yeah, I, I don't so. know. Do okay. Six, six? Six up, I guess. Six up? Okay. Who was laughed at the claim that a dead girl was only sleeping? Jesus. Okay, that's seven, six. Mm. Where did Jesus work his first miracle? Um, at a wedding, he mm -hmm. turned water to wine. Okay, that's eight, six. I'm just trying to get to 10 and then we're done. What was Peter's original name? Simon. That's nine, six. Mm. Kenny. <laughs> Please, Kenny, try. <laughs> try. I am, I am. It was an early morning for me. <sighs> what Pharisee came to Jesus Nicodemus. late Nicodemus. at night? Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so that is... Nine, seven. I just need to get to ten. Okay. Hmm. What was the affliction? No. Who was the angel Gabriel speaking to when he said, Blessed art thou among Mary. Mary. That was me. <laughs> was it right? <laughs> she got it right. Okay. Thank you for coming to my Bible Bowl. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my Bible Bowl. We will be back. <laughs> we'll be back. Right now, we are going to have... Alrighty. You may have to double check. Right now, we're going to do... We're going to have Shiloh Bilingual Praise Team come up. But if you just came, I'm going to, like, repeat this message over and over again. So just kind of bear with me for the night. If you just came, there is white paper. Her name is Jemima. She's walking around. She has the jean jacket on. Beautiful girl. She's walking around. Please, I know you're going to write your prayers on here. But please make sure that on the back or some part of it or the only part of it, please write, God, let your will be done in my life. I know you have a lot of things you want God to do. I know you have a lot of things you want God to take care of. But but it is so much better if you let his will be done in your life, okay? So now we're gonna have Shiloh Bilingual Praise Team come up, so let's get into worship, guys.
Praise the Lord, church. Oh, I know y'all could do better than that. Praise the Lord, church. God is good and all the time. As you notice, there's only one of me for the Shiloh Bilingual Praise Team. And it's because that everybody else is busy doing other things. But to God be the glory. I still have my backup, my Orb Church backup. So we're all family here. We're all here to praise God in one accord. I do want to take the time to uh, thank Samira and Jennifer for giving us the opportunity to come here to give God praise. Um, I know it's been a long, long day for myself. I've been running around doing a whole lot of stuff. And right after I'm done with this, I got to run down to my home church because I have a choir waiting for me. So please bear with us. But we're here to give God praise. Amen? Amen. So I pray that everybody here is ready to sing because the songs I'm going to give is a song that's going to make you guys pop them into your feet and give God praise and raise your hands. Are y'all ready? What? Are y'all ready? Are we ready? All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Who am I that you are mindful of me? How do you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing who am I?
church, sing along with me. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God. Sorry. Happy Sabbath, church. Once again, happy Sabbath. I just wanted to give a, like a quick, not this reminder, don't worry. I just wanted to give a quick reminder. This is a praise and worship night. You guys are kind of far. I get it. We all want to get comfortable. 
Are we scared to move up? That's fine. But if you're going to stay where you are, just stand up and praise and worship. Let's worship together. Let's be in the moment at this time because God is very much present here, okay? So right now we're going to have Hebron, and after Hebron, we're going to have a really, we are going to have a good time with Hebron, but after Hebron, we're going to have another fun time, okay? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Bon sabbat, l'église. Bon sabbat. All right. Like Karen just mentioned, this is a night of worship. And we're just going to turn into Psalms 150. And it reads, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. And when you go down to verse 6, it says, let everything that has breath. Que tout ce qui respire. Let everything that has breath. So I want, to, I want us to take a minute. I need us to breathe in. Just take a minute, right? Breathe in. Breathe out. And I'm pretty sure we all have breath, so we all should be praising God, right? So we're going to do just that. This song says, great are you, Lord, for it's your breath in our lung. That breath we just took did not belong to us. It belonged to God. And because of that, we have to pour out our praise to him. Yeah. 
was gonna add it, sorry, Jenny. Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. Okay, it's testimony time. What a wonderful time that is. I don't know if you heard me, but it's testimony time. What a wonderful time that is. Um, I know that people usually get shy during testimony time, so I'll start with my own testimony. It's real personal, to be very honest. I prayed, I said, God, I'm not too sure if I really want to share that. I've shared it at the church that I currently go to, but I was like, I don't know if I really want to share that. Oh. Okay. All right, then God, I'll, I'll share it. <laughs> Amen. Um, so last year I had surgery. What prompted that was I'm, um, if you don't know, I'm a nurse. Um, and being in the medical field, you kind of have more privy to information. Just as much as someone who's in finance, you would have more privy to more information. It's just like any other thing. But um, being in the medical field, one thing I do every year, I either do it at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, I go see all doctors, all specialties. I'm gonna be honest with you, I do lie. I don't care what complaint I have to give my primary care provider. I need a reason to see my cardiologist. I need a reason to see a urologist. I need a reason to see every type of doctor. I need that referral. That's just me. Everyone's different, but that's just me. So I went to my gynecologist and I went for like a, just a regular annual checkup. Someone's not with you. Okay, they were snapping for me. Um, I went for my annual regular checkup and she felt something and she said, you really need to go get a, um, a ultrasound done. But thankfully, the you know how some of the doctor's offices, like there's multiple different medical practices in the same building? So thankfully, um, Lenox Hill Radiology was across. So she was like, just walk across, I'm gonna put the order in, go get the ultrasound. So I was like, okay, no problem, I'll go get the ultrasound. So I went to get the ultrasound, um, they were like, okay, you know, like, like anything, you'll get your results, your doctor will give you results. They won't give you the results. Um, so I was like, okay, no problem. So she wrote me back and she's like, can you come to the office? I went to the office and she was like, you have something called, um, you have fibroids. But she said, besides the fibroids, you know, like your symptoms, the things, the complaints that I was giving her, the real ones, the real complaints, the real complaints I was giving her, she was like, that, that's not normal. So she was like, okay, we're going to get further testing. And we did further testing and they found out that I had something called endometriosis and adenomyosis. So there's good tissue and there's bad tissue. Unfortunately, the better half of me got the bad tissue, some bad tissue. So it's bad tissue that either grows on, it's both. It goes, one of it grows outside the uterus, the other goes inside the uterus. But but you need, um, that's, that's, when those things happen, I'm rushing, I, I always get nervous. When those things happen, you need a certain specialty. You have to go to a specialist for that. So she referred me to a specialist. And I'm not judging men, 
I'm not touching men. But immediately, I got to the office. He was like, so yeah, we're just going to have to take your uterus out, and we're just going to wipe it clean. We're just going to, you know, we can't really start over, but that's just the best thing that's going to be, that's your best option. So he was just basically saying, like, you, like, you wouldn't have kids anyway, so just you know, take your uterus out. But you know, I, amen, the devil is a liar, amen. I serve a great God, a very wise God. And I, I, every day, I really wanted to be a lawyer, but I went into the medical field. But every day I'm like, I'm so happy I went into the medical field because just the information that you're privy to, the ability to say, yeah, that's a no. I'm gonna get a second opinion. I don't care how many specialists I have to go to. My insurance is gonna cover it because, see me, I'm gonna call the insurance. I don't need the doctor to call the insurance. I will call the insurance. And I will tell the insurance, no, you're gonna find the loophole, you're gonna cover another specialist. You're gonna cover the next appointment. So that happened, and I got a, spe a second specialist. She's the one who ended up doing the surgery. And when I got to the office, I was telling her, uh, like, I was just, she was like, you know, every doctor, like, can you give me your past medical history? Can you tell me what happened? How did this come about? Because in, in the system, they can see how many other doctors you went to, if they use Epic, but I'm getting a little too specific here. But <laughs> they can see what other doctors you went to. So she knew that she was the second specialist I came to see, and she said, okay, like, you know, tell me what he said. And I told her, even though it's in his notes, she wanted me to tell her, I told her, like, you know, he told me to take out my uterus. And she was like, uh, God didn't ask you to take out your uterus. So immediately I was just like, okay, this is the lady, like, this is for me, she's for me. Me and her, we work, we get each other. So I was like, okay, like, this is great. So she said, you know what, you could have your, um, your best option is to have surgery and we could scrape out as much as we can scrape out, but you're probably left with a, um, dear Lord, what's it called again? Um, you ever, I don't, oh God. I'm sorry, I work in the ER. I'm not, we don't get this a lot, but <laughs> the bag, that's <laughs> where the, huh? The, colo the colostomy bag, sorry. Um, you'll be left with that if the surgery goes wrong, which is pretty much mean that your poop comes out through a bag that's attached to your stomach. You don't want it, it's gross. Just the explanation of it is gross, it's not it. So I was just like, okay, she's like, that, that is the real risk to the surgery, but your best bet is to have the surgery. So, Throughout this entire time, I never consulted with my mom. She's a nurse too. But you know, like naturally, and I'm not saying this, because I know there's grumbling in the house. I'm not saying this to say don't talk to your mom. What I'm saying is, the first person you really need to talk to is God. Above all else, like you need to go to God. And it's not to say that your parents don't have your best interests at heart, just naturally, you really should go to God. So I debated this and I pushed the surgery over and over. I kept pushing the surgery, kept pushing the surgery. And then finally I was like, you know what? Let me have a surgery. So I was able to get time off and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have the surgery. And I told my parents exactly, I told my entire family actually, exactly one week before the surgery. So there were, my mom was just like hounding on. She was calling all her prayer warriors to the house. She was just like, you don't need to have this surgery. God is gonna deal with it. And don't get me wrong. We, I mean, the God that we serve, he is far too profound. You understand? He is far too profound for me to just say he's a good God and he's a great God. He is far too profound for that. For me to sit there and say, you know, God necessarily can't do that. God can't do that. I don't necessarily have to go to surgery if God doesn't want me to go to surgery. But the thing is, God, God was okay with me going to surgery. You understand? So there, there are times where those words can be spoken where you don't necessarily need to have surgery. You don't necessarily need to do certain things. I'm not taking that away from people. But this time, God said it was a necessity. So I went to have the surgery. Um, when I had the surgery, when I went to, it's a little different when you're on the opposite side. When you now become the patient versus the caretaker, you're like extremely nervous. I was like extremely, extremely nervous. I went to have the surgery. When I went to have the surgery, I want to make sure I didn't miss any important parts before we get to the surgery. Hold on. This was last year when I went to have the surgery. Um, the surgery, instead of being two hours, it became eight hours. So my parents went, um, you know, one day surgeries, you can't have um, people at the hospital, they have a waiting room for them. Any type of surgery, really, there's a waiting room for you, you can just sit in the waiting room. So my parents came in the waiting room, but my, like I said, my mom's a nurse, so she's like, something's not adding up. Like, tell me if something is wrong, because nobody's telling me if something is wrong. So they didn't tell her. What happened is your fallopian tubes are supposed to sit, sit like this, like the way my arms are, they're supposed to sit down like this. Okay, that's like a free check off to anyone in biology. Your fallopian tubes are supposed to sit like this. Mine's worsening like this on the left side. 
However, on the right side, it was crumpled up like a ball and it was twisted to the back. So she was saying like, okay, I know this girl. This girl kept canceling surgery. Let me just try to unravel it now because if I tell her what happened and I have to tell her to come back to surgery, my doctor's mindset is like, let me look at you based off of how you presented yourself to me. I know you just want me to get it over with now, so I'm just gonna get it over with now. I'm gonna do the best that I can. So the thing is, it doesn't matter how many x-rays she sent me to, how many ultrasounds I did, no one, no doctor, no radiologist saw that the fallopian tube on the right side was in the wrong position. And this is why it's important to really trust God and ten toes down for God, because there are things that even the specialist isn't privy to, but God is privy to. And she was able to unravel it, and I'm very thankful, and I'm very grateful for that, but like the, the, the healing process was extra long. It took a lot of work and things like that, and I'm very grateful that I'm here today. I'm very grateful that I went back to being the caretaker. I'm very grateful that I went back to work and all things to say, but in short, what I'm trying to tell you is like this, you know, now that you hear the testimony, you understand why you would want to keep it to yourself, but I'm here to be a living testimony that I will produce children in the future. Um, and I just want to encourage you all, like no matter how personal the testimony is, you never really know who needs to hear it. So I don't know if anyone's dealing with this or I don't know if anyone's going to be able to give this advice to someone else in the future, but just give the testimony because God definitely deserves the praise. And I want to thank God for all that he has done for me in my entire life because I, I would, you, would, you couldn't have paid me to believe that that was going on inside of me internally, and I wouldn't know. But um, so anyone else is ready to take the mic and give a beautiful testimony no matter what it is. Okay, I'll, I'll stand right here. So I have a testimony as well. I didn't think I would be somebody to be giving. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, so my testimony, I shared this on my social media. Um, so basically on Sunday night, um, I went to sleep, I, I went to bed. Normally, um, normally I knock out, um, especially if I had like a really long day, in which I did, but I was tossing and turning, it took me a long time to fall asleep. Um, so it was like a pretty light sleep, just like lots, lots of tossing and turning. So at one point in the night, I think it was like around about 11.30, I woke up, and then I woke up like fully anyway, um, and I realized like I, I heard my my doorbell. My doorbell is really faint, um, so I'm just like, is that my doorbell? Why is my doorbell ringing at this time? And then I heard another noise. Um, another part I didn't mention when I shared this before is my fridge. If I leave it on open, it, there's an alarm. So I'm hearing my doorbell very faintly and I'm hearing I'm like my I left my fridge open so pretty much there's a whole bunch of commotion going on so I go up front and then as I getting up I realized I'm like am I smelling smoke so I I get to um to the kitchen I close my um my fridge it's making noise and then I'm, I'm smelling smoke and then I and then the doorbell rang again I'm like Oh, so I look out, I'm like, why is my doorbell ringing? And the next thing I realize, like, I open the door, my neighbors are in the hallway, and there's smoke in the hallway. Um, so at this point, I'm just like, oh, wow, there's a fire in my building. Um, so I go, um, I go, I'm like, okay, let me go get my coat. Obviously, if there's a fire, we're going to be evacuating. So I go get my coat, grab a few things. Um, wallet, phone, passport. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm getting ready to go. Everybody's in the in the hallway. There's plenty of smoke. I live on the 12th floor, so I'm just like, we, we're not even really sure. It's just like the smoke in the hallway. So I'm getting ready, but I see like the neighbors, like they're still, everybody's just still standing around. So I'm just like, okay, well, I'm gonna go down. So I'm, wait, me and this other girl, this guy, I see her come out of her apartment too, so we're headed down. She went down before me and then she came back up. She was like, oh, they said the fire's out now, we can go back upstairs. And I'm just like, at this point, I'm like skeptic. I'm just like, okay. Um, so I went back inside. Um, so at this point, like normally, listen, if it's under 
80 degrees, I'm cold, my window is not open. Um, so at this point, I'm just like, smoke is still coming in, like there's still smoke coming in. So I heard the neighbors saying like there was a fire on the second floor, um, and it was like, so pretty much, you know, have each apartment, it was like, I guess like on the, um, one of the J apartments, I'm on like G, so the smoke is still coming in, like it's still coming into the office, into the apartment. Um, so now I'm just like, okay, let me go open my windows um, to just let the smoke out, because like, at this point, like I'm coughing and I'm like suddenly getting a headache. So I just want to praise God because, like I said, like um, I normally sleep really, really deep. Um, so it could have been very much that I would have slept through the whole thing and I would have been inhaling all that smoke throughout the whole night. And you know, and who knows? It, the fire could have been much, much worse. Praise God that it wasn't. Um, they were able to let it out, and I was able to open my windows, sleep um, with fresh air. So I just praise God for that, praise preserving my life. Um, so thank you, Jesus, for that. So my favorite preacher has a line. He says, um, God allows the lesser evil to happen so that the greater evil doesn't happen. So that happened with Karen. That happened with um, Jenny. My testimony, I don't want to be a Jenny. My testimony, I, my testimony is um, I took the company car. We went to go do something. And then I dropped the coworker home. When I dropped the coworker home, I said, you know, I don't want to eat too late. So I'm going to go grab something to eat. I parked the car, and I go in. And they're taking, they're taking so long with the order, and I'm wondering why they're taking so long. I'm like, man, I just ordered one thing. I'm watching people online come in. They got their stuff. They left. People ordered. I'm like, I don't understand. I'm starting to get annoyed. And then the cashier says, Oh, there's lights outside. I'm not looking outside. Then she finally says, there seems there's an accident. I don't know. I said, ah, in my wildest dreams, it can't be the car I was driving. There was all parked cars. When I went outside, there's one car, what I was driving. What happened was the fire truck hit a car. That car hit the car I was driving. So... Cars totaled, both cars, a fire truck hit it. It's gonna be totaled. So I'm saying to myself, thank God I dropped my coworker home. Why? Because if I didn't drop her home, it was raining, she wasn't gonna come out the car, she would have been hurt. That was Tuesday. But on Wednesday, God showed me I spared your life. Because remember, they made me wait for my order. If they gave me my order on time, exactly. <laughs> One of which two things would have happened. I would have been pinned to the car trying to get in. And when I came outside, they asked me to move the car. The driver's door went in. So I couldn't even get in through. I had to go through the passenger side, and the car wouldn't move. God allows the lesser evil so that the greater evil doesn't happen. The lesser evil was me not getting my food on time. <laughs> but the greater evil, God spared my life and her life. So your life, your life, and with long life, he'll satisfy us. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So I have like two quick testimonies. Um, one was an experience, I would say it was my first experience with God, like just an intervention between me and God. Um, so I'll start with that one. I remember I had intentionally sinned on purpose. And you know when you know God is watching you, I knew he was watching me and I still chose to sin on purpose. And I knew that I would still have to ask God for forgiveness later on, but I, I did it. And if anything, I had so much regret and so much fear 
inside of me of like, Lord, how could you love me? Like, I did this intentionally. I did this in your face. Like, I literally looked at, I knew that you were watching me, and I still did it intentionally. And for three days, I was like, Lord, I can't open the Bible because I know that if I open your word, I'm about to get Old Testament fire, 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 break down. Da, da. And I was like, Lord, I'm sorry, but I, I already know what you're going to say. I don't want to open the Bible right now. Give me the time to process already, like as if I'm already speaking for him, like I'm God. So I remember for about three days, it just felt like the worst type of like heartburn. And I'm like, I feel so uncomfortable. Like everything that I would do to basically take away my pain, like if I wanted to walk away from feeling sad, I would go dance and use other things to fill up the sadness that I had. Um, <clears throat> But the heartburn, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I'm like, you know what? This feels more than just like heartburn. This feels like the Holy Spirit is telling me to go to the Bible. And I was so sad about going to, I'm like, Lord, I don't know why you're like trying to press me right now to come to your word when I already know what you're about to say. I come to my room, if anything, I got to a place where I felt like the Holy Spirit was convicting me so much that I was like, you know what, whatever that you say, Lord, I'm just going to take it and just be like, all right, you know, I, I, I deserve it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I stood away for so long. And I didn't realize how much, like, if you guys, a side note, if you guys don't already know how much God loves you, I pray that this shows you even more how much, even though when he knows you're doing something intentionally, he still chases after you and still says, I love you. So I literally was crying on my bed, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to open up this Bible. I opened it up, and I forgot which verse this is, but it says, oh, what joy whose sins have been forgiven. And when I first opened that up, I, I knew immediately that was for me. And the way that that pain went away immediately, I just started sobbing. I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, you are so good. You're so great. Like, I can't even believe that you were forgiving me after I've done something so intentionally like that. And I was just like, wow. And I consider that to be more than just me opening my Bible. Like, God saw me in the midst of my sin and spoke to me. Like, he actually spoke to me. He, the God that we can't see, literally spoke to me and used his word. Like, I remember I used to hear people preach about, oh, like, oh, you, he can speak to you through your Bible. I'm like, I don't even know what you mean. Like, is he, like, going to stick his hand through the word? Like, I don't know. That was amazing. That's one. The other half, I remember I was having a hard time in hearing God and knowing if I was walking in the right way. Um, that he wanted me to, you know, because sometimes we can get very fearful about where we should go and how we should walk. I had this dream where I woke up from my bed and everything was really gloomy and gray outside. And I felt like there was a beast stalking in my house. I don't know what type of beast, but it was just dark. I walk into my living room and everyone in my family was on the couch, like it was a long couch. I don't know how it was that long, but it was really long. And everybody was sitting on the couch and sleeping. And the blinds were closed. It just felt really dark and just misty. And just, there was even some smoke on the floor. And I sat down, but I didn't go to sleep. And I remember, I'm like, yo, I don't like this environment. I don't like where I am. I see what's going on. I need to go. Instead of running outside, I run towards my room. And as soon as I ran towards my room, this beast starts to chase me. As soon as I turned to my room, my little small room, my room took up the space of maybe like, maybe this, this sanctuary. And it was so bright. Like, it's like outside looked like a garden. Like, everything was so green and beautiful. And there were two lions that were huge, like very detailed. And I remember I like dived under the lion and the lion stood right in front of the beast that was chasing me. And the beast got so small. And there was another lion by the window that was helping me to go towards this beautiful garden that I've never seen. But of course, if it's a dream from God, I couldn't actually get out. I just woke up. Um, <laughs> but I looked at that dream again as Lord you're speaking to me, but also like, wow, I realize that my room is my secret place. Like that place is where I can, you know, pray and spend that time with the Lord. So I just share that to say first, the first one is, doesn't matter where you are, God most definitely hears your prayers. 
he sees you and he will speak to you and reach you from where you are, no matter where you are. And I believe that that dream also shows that wherever that you are, make a space for prayer. Prayer literally is like the telephone for you and God. Literally find a secret place and spend that time with him. Amen. I just want to say a amen. Before she goes, I just want to, I don't know the young sister's name. I'm sorry. Neve. Okay. I just want to say testimonies to thank God is amazing, but testimonies with accountability is, I mean, glorious. And the accountability for you to say, I sinned and I knew that is, I promise you, heaven is rejoicing. So continue to do that. Continue to take accountability in all that we do. Two more? Are you going to go two? So two more. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> okay. Um, so everyone knows I'm in nursing school. Um, but <laughs> um, so something happened. Um, I, when it happened, I was like embarrassed. Like, yeah, I was ashamed because um, so I, I, I got, I failed my class, which resulted in me getting kicked out of nursing school, right? And um, for a good while, I was going through a moment of like, God, why? Like, thought I was your child. Like, why did this happen? Right? So um, after <laughs> crying and like spending a day praying about it, you know, met it from somewhere, and um, I, uh, you know, I, I emailed the school, and then the school was like, okay, um, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do, and. Um, Usually the process, at my school, usually the process for appeals takes about two to three months. But for me, it barely took like three weeks. And um, I'm back in, I start again in May. So um, I thank God for that. And you know, yeah. Good evening, everyone. I'm a little emotional, and I know I'm a super, super familiar face, I mean, unfamiliar face to everybody in here, but um, to piggyback off of what you said, um, so my name is Shannon, born and raised in Alabama. So I moved up here back in, I started working up here in 2018. I moved up here during the pandemic in 2020. I am Seventy of Venice, raised, born and raised Seventy of Venice. I'm from the South Central Conference. So I grew up on Oakwood University campus. So I, um, thank you. So, um, I didn't mean to get all this, but thank you. Um, I came up here to New York, kind of running away, not from where I'm from, but just kind of getting away. I've kind of always felt like an octopus. Like everybody's always, pulled me in their ways, but I've never really had my own solitude to just have my own time in relationship with God. I always wanted that, and I'm not going to say always wanted it at 25. I'm 35 now. At 25, I'm 34, I'm sorry. At 25, I was like, let me get my own relationship with God. Started reading the Bible, just, you know, got my own relationship, and fast forward. 2018 came up here, but I was going back and forth back home. So I would still be able to go to church. I could go to my home church, things like that. And even any other city that I live in, Atlanta, you know, I would, I have my church there and things like that. So I always had a place, but here in New York, I'm by myself. I don't have any family here. I just came up here just to work and I would just watch TV online. Mine is also during the pandemic. So of course everybody's doing TV online. So it worked for me. But then I was like, I want to be around other Adventists. Like, this is how I grew up. I grew up going to church on the Sabbath and Friday nights and Wednesdays. So I was like, I would like to have a community. And it was this one Sabbath. I got up, I went to this church, and it was closed. And I don't know if maybe it was a revival or something, and they just were at another location, but they, church just wasn't happening that day. So I left, didn't think nothing of it. And I have clients and stuff. and. I always ask them, you know, what church do you go to? What church do you go to? However, I don't know a lot of Adventists up here. So I just recently started going to a hair salon over here. And um, tonight I'm leaving and I hear this music. And I'm like, what is this music? And as I'm walking, I'm like, this sounds familiar. And I turn and this emblem, because you know this is an Adventist emblem, I saw the emblem and I was like, oh wow, okay, you know, 
let me see what's going on. At first, the singing, I'm thinking it's choir rehearsal. Because, you know, it's a Friday night thing. So I'm like, let me just go see. Well, I walked in and I see this congregation. And I was like, okay. So I sit down in the back and I'm like, let me just see. Let me just see what this is about. And then I saw a young lady and she walked, um, she had like the Pathfinder shirt. And I'm like, yo, this feels so normal. It feels so normal. And when you're out by yourself in the world and you don't have anybody else, just the presence of other people who think and believe like you feels so good and familiar. So I don't know you guys yet. I will be back. But just, just it's, it's this that's so necessary. Like I said, I'm just walking. I'm not, even, I'm not even from this area. I'm literally just leaving the hair salon, just walking it. I hear the music and I'm like, and so to the testament of you, I, I always say, I tell people, I was raised in the church. You know, when you're kids, you're like, I do not want to do this. I'd rather be at the skating rink. You know what I'm saying? But I thank God so much for my grandparents and my family who raised me in the church because it's true that when you train up a child, God will direct every other way they have to go. You don't have to worry about anything once they leave your house. They will be there. But one thing for certain, two things for sure, when they say, when you ask God, God, order my steps, sometimes you really, 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 truly do not know where he's leading you to, who he's he's leading you to, where he's taking you through, what the biggest thing is, is just trusting him. I'm leaving the shop. I'm trying to rush home just to get to nothing. And I, I came to God. So I thank you guys. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so no one else? We're all good? Okay, beautiful. We're going to have Hebron come up. We're going to get into intercessory prayer. I, I really do wish you guys would come up for intercessory prayer, but more importantly, wait a minute. Oh, I thought she was getting up. <laughs> Before you come up for intercessory prayer, as a matter of fact, I hope you all put your prayers in the prayer box. I got to go put mine. Um, before we go into intercessory prayer, it's one more thing I wanted to ask you before you come up. Um, if any of you are prayer warriors, and I know like a lot of times the prayer warriors, they want to get prayer too. They don't necessarily want to be standing up here praying. I am, am going to do the intercessory prayer, but if any of you are prayer warriors and you'd like to stand behind me and outstretch your hands upon these people and pray upon everyone who is going to walk up, you're very much welcome to do so. But as the praise team gets ready, the mics are here. As the praise team gets ready, before we get into intercessory prayer, can you just go down a little bit? I'm sorry, my voice is not bigger than yours. <laughs> Um, as the praise team get into prayer, I wanted to talk to you about something real quick. Hold on. The prayer box is right here. I wanted to talk to you. Um, the, the thing that I had told you guys to write on the paper, right? I know you're going to write your request to God. But I'd also tell you, God, let your will be done. Because it is very, very easy to complain. And before we get into prayer, I'm, uh, like I told you guys, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a trauma nurse, to be specific. So I'm a trauma nurse that works in the ER. Pretty much what happens is there's very few, anyways, I'm a trauma nurse that works in the ER. We get all the traumas and we treat all the traumas. So I just want to inform you of the couple of things that I usually see at work that it's really, it really gives you perspective in life. Um, one of the worst things I ever seen was a 21 or 23 year old African American male. He came in and he was stabbed. And we had to do something called a thoracotomy. Really, what it is is that when you come to, um, like, when anyone gets shot or anyone gets stabbed, of course, we send them to the hospital unless they're dead on arrival, correct? When they send them to the hospital, we get like maybe two, sometimes, a lot of times EMS says we're five minutes out. But it's really, you only get two to three minutes to prepare the room. And the trauma room is pretty much like an OR room, like where you have surgery. The only thing is it's not sterile. It's, we're doing the best that we can in the emergency room. That's really what we do. No matter what level one hospital you work out, whatever you work at, that's what we do. And what it, a thoracotomy is, we open up the chest and we're literally squeezing your heart. We're doing the best that we can, and we're using a whole bunch of machines to push a bunch of blood into you. And I would say that's probably the worst thing. Also, I get a lot of rape victims. Something that, like, I'm so used to watching those, like, cr criminal shows that you're not really thinking, oh, like, okay, like, we watched a criminal show, like, oh, that was a crazy scene, until that becomes your patient. You understand? And it, it's not just females, it's males. 
I'm having a lot of 21 year olds coming in with stroke symptoms, having a literal stroke. That's, that's unheard of, it's insane. I'm having a lot of patients that are coming in with a lot of abdominal pain. That's like the number one. So the way the medical record system works in is that when you come in, it'll ask you, okay, ask the patient what's their chief complaint. What is the main reason you're coming in today? And it, it, it prompts the most common complaints. And abdominal pain is by far number one. You have patients coming in, oh, I'm having abdominal pain, I'm having diarrhea, oh, I saw blood in my urine, and then we have to tell them they have cancer. One of the worst patients that, I wouldn't say worst, but one of the saddest things that I had to do was, I had a man, he works in the hospital. So usually when you work in the hospital, you come down, you just say, hey, like, I work in the hospital, these are my complaints, like, I just want to get checked real quick, I'm not off the clock, my goal is to get back on the clock. My goal is to just be seen real quick, and we, you know, you look out for your own. Whatever department you're in, you work in the hospital, you're trying to speed up the care for them. Like, okay, let me run, let me send your blood test to the lab, let me do as much as I can as quickly as possible so you can go back to work because you're still on the clock. And how do you tell someone that, hey, you have cancer, but you want to go back on the clock? So when you go to God in prayer, that's why I keep urging you, God, let your will be done, because there's there are far more greater things that you could be dealing with than your bosses mean then you're not getting the advancement in your job, then you're not in the position that you want in life, then you're not married. Like these are the common complaints that I hear in a lot of prayer rooms. Oh, I'm sending this prayer for my daughter because she's not married. There's a whole lot more things. If God wanted her to be married, or God wanted him to be married, you would be married. And then if you choose not to obey God, that's on you. That's on you. If you choose to marry the wrong person, that's on you. But there are far more greater things. Oh, God, I'm, I'm begging for a child. If God wanted to give you a child, and that is why I said earlier, God is far more profound than we can ever possibly concept. Our human brain cannot fully con have the full concept of who God is. We cannot. We are no match for him. So when if it's not your season, it's not your season, and that's okay. Another thing that I wanted to tell you right before they go into prayer, I was reading Exodus this week, and while I was reading it, uh, this is the time that Moses went into uh, the mountain. Was it Mount Sinai? Mount Sinai? Mount Horeb? Or same? Same thing? Okay. Well, he went on the mountain. He met with God four days, 40 nights. He was doing his thing. That's great. And God has given him the description of what he's going to, how he's going to build the tabernacle. I would hope that we all know that part. That's okay. Or I was refreshing, whatever. And he, God's giving him exactly like, bit by bit, you're going to do this, and this is what's going to happen, and this is what the priests are going to wear, and this is what's going to go, and you, you hear God give such detail, okay, you're going to have gold for this, and you're going to do bronze for that, and you're going to have this lavender grape, and you're going to have the veil, and God's giving all this detail, and I'm sitting here reading it like, okay, that's great, um, where are they getting the materials from, though, because that was real confusing to me, I was like, where's the materials coming from, and God's telling me, he's like, the same materials that the Egyptians gave them when they left Egypt. A lot of us are complaining about things, and some people were having the gold that was in their earrings, they took it out and they gave it to Moses. And that gold was turned, it was heated and it was turned, and now it's the mercy seat. So you don't know what you have. You might have the gold that's gonna be affecting the cherubims. You might have that lavender grape, um, that lavender drape that the high priest is gonna wear. And we're not literally gonna recreate the tabernacle here today, but the point of fact is you don't know what you have. So rather than complaining about what you don't have, God, I'm so thankful for what I do have. God, I'm extremely, extremely thankful because at any given time, you have no idea what you possess. We hear these iconic stories of business people or other people, or even when you heard my testimony, I don't, you don't, I didn't know what I had. So I just want you to understand that as we go into this prayer session, be extremely, extremely grateful and extremely thankful. And lastly, do not forget, always ask God, let your will be done. Don't give the complaint. You don't have to worry about the complaint. God knows. He, I promise you, if all of us would to spend the next 10 minutes just saying, God, let your will be done, you would see the shape-shifting happening in your life this week. I, I pray upon that. Okay, so we're going to have Hebron Praise Team sing. And we're going to get started. You can come up for intercessory prayer. I promise you, just come up. Just come up for prayer. If you didn't get to, the prayer box is right here, but let's come up for prayer.
up for prayer now. You can come up. No one has told you. Holy Father, Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. Oh, Papa Bonzie. God, we ask you to please come down and hear us, Father God. As you're worshiping with us, Father God, whatever it may be, whatever sin we have committed, those known and those unknown, we righteously, we graciously ask you for your forgiveness, Father God. We ask that you would let your will be done in our lives, Father God that no matter what the circumstances, no matter who's sick, no matter what's going on, Father God, our concern is to let your will be done, Father God, Lord. We are extremely grateful for the clothes that we have on, Father God, because you can easily take it away. We are extremely grateful for the meals that we had this week, God. Whether it was our preferred meal or not, we did not starve, Father God. And if one of us starved, we thank you, Father God, that there is refreshments that you would be able to give them food today, Father God, Lord. No matter what the circumstance is today, Father God, we ask that you would send your most holiest angels, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Reziel. We ask, Father God, that you would send your most um, omnipotent, uh, most arc, beautiful archangels to come down and fight on our behalf as you let your will be done, Father God, Lord. It is very easy for us to complain. It is very easy for us to be ungrateful. It is very easy for us to be spiteful, Father God, Lord. But we ask that you would have mercy upon us, that you would fight for us, Father God, Lord. That you would never stop fighting for us, Father God, Lord. Even if our flesh is fighting against you, Father God, Lord. Fight for us like you did with everyone else, Father God, in the Bible. Make a movement like you made a movement for everyone else in the Bible, Father God, Lord. We ask that you do not spare us, that you do not forget us, Father God, Lord. We know, Father God, that you are here and dismissed with us right now. We don't need a fancy prayer. We don't need fancy words. We just need truth with you, Father God, Lord. A lot of us are suffering, Jesus. A lot of us, let me be correct, a lot of us think we're suffering. A lot of us think we're depressed. A lot of us think we're sad. A lot of us think we're broke. Because I'm not going to walk into God's house and say, God, I'm broke. I am very, very much rich. I'm very much serving the God of all gods. A lot of us are thinking that we're so behind in life. God knows time. God orchestrates time. God commands time. Who are we? The same conversations you had with Job. Who are you to complain? Who are you to tell me? Do you tell Horizon's belt where to stretch? Do you tell the, 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 the gates, the doors to open so rain? If I can feed the birds, I can feed you. If I can give the birds the ability to make a nest, I can make a home for you. So whatever it may be, whatever draw us here, whether it's that some of us had to perform, whether it's that some of us came because we were booked, whatever it may be that drew us here tonight, let us not leave without learning that God's will will be done. And that the beauty of it all is that you have given us gifts to encourage your will to be done. And those gifts are called the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. 
Help us to realize that we can call upon the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. Help us to learn that we can break protocol in the flesh, Lord. In the physical world, we break the protocol that these things will not come upon us, that they will not come upon our children, that they will not come upon our, our parents, that anything that the enemy has planned will be stopped right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every attack, no matter how demonic it is. Too many lukewarm sermons being preached, but there is a real spiritual world, and it is ready. It is crouching at your door, ready to attack you. The enemy wants to attack you in every kind of way. You think it's normal that these things are happening in society, and they're not. They're not. They're trying to change genders. They're trying to change all these things, but we serve a mighty God who they would have to account for all the things that they've said, Lord, and all the things that they said, Lord. We cannot say, God bless America, but we take him out the schools, but we take him out of every area in our lives. And we as Christians cannot continue to treat God that he's just a God to cover our food, and he's just a God to cover us while we drive, while we get on the train. God is far more greater than that. Have mercy on us, God, for all the times we underestimated you. Have mercy on us, God, for all the times we spoke evil against you by saying, God, I'm depressed. What is depression? You are my child. What is depression? What is that? What is financial burdens? You are my child. Come on, we have to have some sort of faith, some sort of understanding that we can break the protocol on our behalf. We can ask heaven to back us up. Heaven back us up in our finances. Heaven back us up in our marriages. Heaven back us up in our children. Heaven back us up in every area of our lives. Every area we leave unattended. And for every monitoring spirit that is seeking to destroy. For every monitoring spirit that is seeking to affect us in our daily lives. We cancel you right now in the name of Jesus. We call legions of angels to come around every person in this building right now. The same amount of angels that, that circled Jesus after his 40 days and 40 nights of fasting is the same amount of legions of angels that will circle you right now in the name of Jesus. God has called us to do greater than his son, so we must do greater. God, forgive us for being so focused on creating the family. And although you did call us for that, well, some of us, we ask you, Father God, to help us remember our purpose here. Our purpose is not to worry about the flashy clothes and all these things and go into these parties. That's not our purpose. God is far too greater than that. There are countries that are starving and we're sitting here complaining about Uber Eats. Have mercy on us, God. We are wasting the food in the home because our tongues are itching for something else. Have discipline on you. You gluttonous spirit, depart from us in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask that you would come into our will and let your will be done. Teach us about the fruits of the spirit and teach us about the spirit realm because our flesh is always warring against you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command all, all of your flesh to sit down. The authority of God stands before you. Heavenly Father, and as we come to the next portion, as we have more singing before we have our sermon, we ask, Father God, that you would enter into each and every one of us right now. There was far too little testimonies for the greatness of who you are. There's far too little people, far too many people sitting for the greatness of who you are when others are singing. God is worth it. The clothes on your back, the car that you drive, however you got here. God is worth it. He is worth it. He is worth the adoration and the praise. The Bible says the angels scream holy, holy 24 hours a day. And you're giving God 10 minutes. Have mercy on us. Heavenly Father, come into our lives and move right now in the name of Jesus. You have promised us things. You have ordained things for us. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the band is letting them let us know that they're here. Can we give a round of applause for the band, guys? Everyone playing. They're so good. <laughs> and thank you to Hebron for singing again. Right now, we're going to have Horrible Adult come. We're going to have the owners of this church. Let me stop. <laughs> we're going to have the homeowners of this church come up and sing. And right after Horrible Adult, we're going to have Maranatha Choir. But right before Maranatha, I'm going to definitely introduce Brother Gasmere. I know you all know him, but it would not be right if I did not introduce him. So right now, we just want to thank Horror for coming up. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Are you tired of worshiping the Lord? I hope not. So we're going to be speaking, I mean, singing more French and Creole songs. We have the lyrics um, ready for you. So I hope you guys sing with us. Don't be shy. I want to see everybody singing along with us as we start this section. Jemison sous l'esclavage dans la sombre nuit. Oh, baby, 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 baby. 
Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Horeb. Maranatha can come up. As Maranatha comes up, I just wanted to give you a nice, I wanted to give a nice warm, warm, warm welcome to Brother Gasmir, who's going to come up and preach. Brother Gasmir has actually been preaching and in the ministry for 21 years. That is amazing. Can we give that a round of applause? Someone who did not stay away from the ministry, someone who kept at it, someone who has stayed with it, stayed grounded in God. What a beautiful thing. He's also now creating his own church called Purpose House Church. He's creating his own church in Long Island. So can we give him another round of applause for continuing to do the work that God has called him to do, for never giving up. What a beauty. So we thank Maranatha the Choir from coming all the way from Queens to perform with us. And after that, we'll have Brother Gasmir and we'll close out everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, I can't hear you say praise the Lord, everyone. Beni soit l'éternel, béni soit l'éternel, béni soit l'éternel, béni soit l'éternel. Gloire à Dieu. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. We, we thank Ore for inviting us. We thank Jenny for inviting the Marinette the Youth Choir. Um, it's, we're all the way from Queens. So... It's a, a trip, but we thank God because he gave us the traveling mercies to get here, and our church allowed us to come. Um, we are blessed. We have been blessed throughout this whole program. We thank God because of the fact that this program is just a testament for how many churches need to continue to do this every Friday. We, I remember Friday night like when I was younger, right? When we used to have Friday night vest, we would run. I, I, like, I would run. Yes, yes, I'm still young. When I was younger, I would run for Friday night vespers because it was like the thing to do. Because, you know, you couldn't say you was going to be home and do nothing. But, but nowadays, you know, everybody has all these distractions. And, yeah. But we ask that God help us to be redirected back to him. Because all he wants to do is for us to get to know him. He's been revealing himself all this time. This whole time that we've been going through things. And, and we've been praying and asking God when, where, how. It's because he's trying to get you to know him better. He's been revealing himself the whole time. I was listening to the documentary. You know when Easter happened a couple of weekends ago, they had the Moses, right? The Moses story on Netflix. How many of you guys watched that? The Moses, the, the Moses story on Netflix? Oh, you guys didn't watch that? Yes, yes. I mean, oh, you watched half of it? Okay, it was three episodes. It was so, um, I felt it was like so reveal revealing about what really happened. You know, we, we watched that old movie and it really wasn't what really happened. You know, when you look at the Bible, it tells you exactly what the truth was. And, and the, fact that, the fact that Moses was taking the, Israel, um, the Israelites out of Egypt so that they can go worship on the mountain. It was, that was the whole point of the 10 plagues. That was the whole point of the, 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 the angel of death that came and, and wiped out all the firstborn of not just the humans, but the animals too. It was, the, the whole point was for to go and worship God. He took them out of slavery out of the 400 and something years so that they can go and worship God. So that's why this night of worship is important. God wants you to worship him. We were created to worship. We were never created to worry. We were never created to panic. We were created to worship. So we thank God because we are worshiping him in spirit and in spirit and in truth. So we're going to sing this song. It's called Louis Bon Dieu. And then we're going to sing a song after that. Two songs and then we are going to be out your way so that we can have our preacher, our pastor, Gasmir, come and bless us with a word. Continue to pray for our choirs. Continue to pray for our praise teams because we know the enemy does not like this. He does not want this to happen. But we thank God because God is always, always a winner. He never loses a battle. And we thank God because this was able to happen and we can, as a God, continue to have more of these nights. Amen. We praise God and we ask that He continue to bless our choir. Are all the mics on? Amen. Louis Bonzu.
Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Maranatha Mass Choir. Amen. Under the leadership of uh, Apostle Rachel. Amen. Belazir. Amen. I enjoyed you guys and to the praise and worship team. Amen. God bless you guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Listen, those who are watching live, God bless you. Jenny, thank you so much. Jenny, listen, somebody say five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes um, or less. Or less. Uh, but let's not rush. We don't rush the movies. Amen. Uh, let's, let's, um, before we pray, can everybody go to your phones. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. One verse tonight. Musicians, I want you to lock in with me. I've been playing drums for about 24 years, so I do know the life of a musician. I need you guys to check in. The danger is that many musicians, when a sermon comes to play, you guys check out. I need you guys to check in, because what you're doing is literally warfare. And so I know about this. I've played for a lot of artists, both in our church and outside our church. I don't toot my horn. You wouldn't know it unless you know me as a drummer. But that, just, I got, I, you guys need to check in real quick. For least, less than five minutes. I'm actually four minutes. Somebody say four minutes. Everybody there? Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Everybody there? If you're not there, if you have a joy, that's, that's your fault. That's why you're not there. <laughs> My God. If you have an apple, Karen. Thank, put your hands together for Apostle Karen tonight for leading our worship. Amen. To the leader, leader of this church, I'm not sure if he's going to see it now, but to uh, Dr. Um, Pastor Maniga. Amen. Amen. I'm getting younger, older. Amen. Um, I'm older than Stephanie. Amen. <laughs> she, Proverbs 23, verse what, everybody? That's not everybody. Proverbs what, everybody? 23 what? You have it, everybody? The Bible says what? It says, my son, you could put my daughter there, but my son, give me what? That's not everybody. Give me what? And let your eyes observe my ways. Let's read it one more time. Can we read it loud in concert? One, two, three, let's go. My son, my child, give me I have less than three minutes. Let, let's pray. Abba, um, please do it again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, Karen, real quick, when you introduced me, 21 years of humbly having the opportunity to preach the gospel all around North America and the Caribbean, um, both in our church and outside our church, civic centers, the U.N., I've had a lot of opportunities, and the reason why I'm sharing that is not to toot my horn, and not at all. I said that based on something what Rachel said before she sang. You actually helped me preach tonight. Courtney, good to see you. Um, the series that you're doing, Jenny, is on the fruit of the Spirit, and tonight is love, the first installment. I wish, my God, I wish... I wish for us to be saved, it was enough for God just to say, I love you. For him just to say, those who are watching live or later on, this is for you. My sister, good to see you again. Thank you for coming again tonight. I wish it was enough. Somebody say enough. enough. Youngsley, it was enough for God to say, I love you. But it wouldn't be. How many times have we operated outside of God's will even when he showed you he loved you. And so I have less than two minutes to say this to you. Rachel, you helped me preach tonight to say that for all these years, now if I was speaking, those who don't know, I'm not only in, in ministry, I'm in business. I own my own uh, um, private equity family firm that we're building and bu building stronger. And so I've been in a lot of arenas in terms of politics with presidents and ambassadors. And if I was at, like, say, LIU University and I'm speaking to them, if I went to Harvard, if I went to uh, Penn State, Rachel, and I'll be talking to them, I would have to journey with them to kind of get them to understand because you're dealing with agnostics, you're dealing with atheists, you're dealing with people who have religious trauma. 
But I'm, I'm in the room with people who've been to Pathfinders. You know. You've, you've been to Week of Prayers. You know. And so, Rachel, you help me preach tonight. I have less than two minutes. Watch this. You said, God, hallelujah, God, you have been revealing yourself all this time. And the problem is that many of us, we have not responded to I love you. I love you is not words. I've realized that I love you is a what? Action. Thank you, Shauna. What is it, everybody? Action word. Jesus did not just say, I love you. He acted out, I love you. Amen? And so here it is. Here it is. I'm done. Less than one minute and 50 seconds. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> here it is. I'm, I'm 38 as of last month, March 21st. Thank you, the best month in the world. Jesus was born in March. Amen. And we rebuke December 25th in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, but I'm, I'm really wrapping up. Guys, look, watch this. Look at me, everybody. Harold um, Melvin in the Blue Notes. I was born in uh, 86. 86 was a good year. But the Blue Notes had a song. Rachel, you helped me preach tonight. He'd been revealing himself all this time. Um, it's kind of like, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's kind of like you're, you're looking for an outlet to charge your phone and there's an outlet in your face and you just do not want to plug it in. And then you have the audacity to say, God, why isn't my phone working? So here it is. Harold, thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to Rachel. You've been revealing yourself. I, I wish, again, I wish I love you was just enough to be saved. But it's not. Jenny, it's not enough just to hear I love you. Because if all Jesus had to do is say, I love you, and you respond and say, I love you, and we could be saved, he'll be here by now. But he has to show you. So Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes has a song. Has a song called Emanuela. If you, Pastor Kenny, good to see you. If you do not know me by now. I know, with education, sometimes if you sing the words, you'll know it. So watch this. If you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. You. And it's so crazy that some, some weeks ago, I'm, I'm driving in the car, I'm going through the radio, and I'm listening to the song, and I'm like, wow. Even secular songs will reveal the rebuke that we need. And here it is tonight. As I land the plane, I'm not speaking to LIU, I'm not speaking to Harvard, I'm not speaking to Princeton University, I'm not at the UN speaking to an ambassador of Ethiopia or, or when I used to be chief of staff for the ambassador of Sierra Leone. I'm not speaking to these guys. I'm speaking to young people that you know. He's been revealing himself to you, Youngsley. Nobody else is here, just you and I. And the statement is this. Forget the Seventh-day Adventist church. This is Youngsley and Jesus. If you do not know him by now, there's a high chance that you may not ever know him. I'm not talking about religious trauma. I'm talking as a pastor that was in the conference and doing this, yes, with church planning in Long Island. Listen, Karen, beyond church, it's all about the personal relationship of God. And for me personally, there are two things in my life that reveals, that reveals to me who God is to me. Once you get married, my God, and once you have children. Those are the two things. And when you go through things in your marriage, when you go through things of like having two beautiful black Wakanda queens that keep me bald, amen, it will reveal to you the serious things of how serious your personal relationship with God is. And the statement it is again tonight, if you don't know me, what? By now, there's a high chance you will never, never know me. Here it is, here it is. I land the plane. Musicians, look at me. I'm going to look at you. Forget the rest of the people tonight. Watch this. Look. God has given you the most powerful and most dangerous gift ever. It's the power of choice. It's powerful because you have the power to choose him. But it's dangerous is because God, God has to respect your choice not to choose him. What makes the wedding day so powerful? Are you married, young man? Amen. Take your time. Amen. But when you get married, what makes the day so beautiful is because after you spend thousands of dollars and everybody fly in from overseas or from other states and they come, you have the option to say, I don't. 
So I do was amazing when the option of I don't was there. And so once again, gas smear. If you do not know him by now, there's a high chance you will never, never know him. And Rachel, you've been saying it tonight. You can slowly start playing. Just the keys. Here it is. He's been revealing himself to you all this time. If I was at LIU, if I was at your college, Emmanuel, Dr. Emmanuel, I would be spending our journey with them. I would systematically take them from Genesis all the way to Revelation. You guys can outdo that to me. You guys are master guys. You know. You know! And here's the danger, Gathsmere. Do you know what hell is? Hell is the unbeliever's eternity. But salvation, you know what's amazing? Hell is a place and a state of being, but heaven is the person. Let me explain. As so many of us, I say this publicly, I'm, I, Ted Wilson, we can have lunch. Here it is. We're so warped in our minds that we're running to a place and we forget biblically that it's a person. How do we know? John chapter 17 verse 3. And this is life eternal that we might know him. The Greek is gnosko. And this is why I just don't believe in Jesus anymore. Why? I believe in him, but I just, what's, what's the word? I what? I just do not believe because you only believe in something that you do not know. My name is Gasmir Daniel Valson. I don't believe that's my name. I know that's my name. And so here it is. I wish I love you was enough. So when you watch these Jesus movies, like one of my favorite movies, the, like the closest ever to salvation, in a sense, in the warped human mind, will be Passion of the Christ. And, and Mel Gibson and the actor, he actually broke a rib. He, he, he has a literally a large 12-inch gash like that's in his body like to this day. He got strike, um, struck by lightning. That's the closest ever. And when you watch these Jesus movies, Emmanuel, Dr. Emmanuel, they will, they will put cloth over him while he's on the cross. But no, 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 no. He died in open shame. Stephanie, for you and I, I wish I love you was enough. So here's where I'm done. Everybody stand to your feet. In business, there's two doors that makes you profitable. When I'm, when I'm having meetings with deals that we're closing, million, million dollars, whatever the deals are, Young Sli, you're in business, right? We, we've talked about it in business. When, when, I'm, when I'm having dinner, lunch, STK, wherever these people, and we're talking, oh, yeah, we did $5 million, we did $10 million this year. I don't care about the gross. I care about the net. Because the net shows the margin that you're really profitable. Jenny, the profitable. It's all about net. Oh, I did 20 million this year. Okay, what's the net? How, how much was your expenses? So what makes you profitable is, Rachel, you either have to increase your income or decrease your expenses. So here it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. The download. Thank you. The, the 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration, the ruach, the pneuma. That's the Greek. And it's profitable. What word did that say, everybody? <laughs> Go ahead, mama. It's profitable for reproof, for correction, instruction. To be profitable, you need to have expenses. What expenses are there? The expenses of letting go of yourself and what you like so he could become profitable in your life. I wish I love you was just enough, Gasmir. You know, I do this all the time because I can't speak about you. After 21 years of ministry, after going through things personally in my life to this day, Rachel, I'm understanding now it's personal. It's personal. It's personal. I'm at war every day. You're at war. I'm looking at you in your faces. You're at war every day. Keep on fighting. I'm going to bless you right now. Do you know that a wounded soldier is not a dead soldier? A wounded soldier is not a dead soldier. 
That's my baby. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I got to say this. Remember in Ephesians chapter 6, when Paul is giving the, the, the list of, uh, uh, of articles of war that, that the soldier must have? And it says, take off the shield of what? Faith. Shield of what, everybody? That you'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Pastor Kenny, you know this. Watch this. Karen, when they had a shield, when you watch 300, that was one of my favorite, one of my favorite movies, 300, and they had these circle of like, shields. Anybody seen 300s before? That's not how it was. The, the whole shield covered your whole shana from your face to your feet. And it was, ah, it was built with iron and leather. And Rachel, before they went to war, they used to, used to take the whole shield and they dipped it in water and drowned it. So when the fiery darts of the enemy were to come, it was able to quench it. So when the enemy attacks, because your faith is on right, you can quench the attacks. I wish I love you was enough. But I'm going to tell this to you. In order for you to literally receive the love of God, that's another thing. God loves us. The question is, have you ever received his love? I didn't say receive church. I didn't say receive the 28 fundamental beliefs. I remember Bron Jacobs, pastor, used to say this. He came to Kingsborough years ago. He said, uh, we were screaming, Greg, uh, Amanda Harley, we were screaming. Yo, he was like, if you think that the doctors of our church will save us, go into a hospital room when somebody has fourth stage cancer and say, in the name of the sanctuary, be healed. You won't be healed. It's in the name of who? Jesus the Christ. So here it is. I want you to say this with me before we pray. It, I know you kind of like, what he's going to say? It is going. It is going to cost me. In order for you to accept and receive the love of God, it's going to cost you. As a musician there's, there, and singers, I want you to listen to me. When I've done stuff with praise and worship leaders, I tell them, be careful of the words that you sing. I'm very careful with words I sing now. That song, Here I Am to Worship, I love it. The bridge, I'll what? That's a lie. I switch the words. I say, I'll always know how much it cost. Sometimes we sing songs because of, of, of tradition. No. I'll always know how much it costs. Because to see my sins is going to cost what? It's going to cost me. Somebody listening tonight. I'm trying to get more pizza from me. We're about to pray now. Here it is. Harriet Tubman. Anybody know Harriet Tubman? What's the famous, one of the famous quotes she ever had? She says, I freed what? Many slaves, but I would have freed more if they what? Knew they were slaves. But here's the most powerful point of that. She carried with her, Jenny, a shotgun. When she took many slaves to victory, she carried a shotgun, my God, to shoot any slave that decided to turn back around because she did not want to run the risk of the slave getting away and then being tortured to tell them where she is. So she would rather die in freedom than be a slave again. So she carried a shotgun and says, if you try to leave, I'm going to shoot you. Here's the point tonight. It's going to cost you. You know what you need to write off, to let Jesus be profitable in your life. You know what it is. Let's pray. Abba, thank you, Abba, for 
your kindness towards us. I've had some personal conversations with some people in here as I look into the room. Some I did not. But what I do know is that everyone here have a knowledge of who you are. So it releases the tension tonight over the preacher for me to work hard <laughs> because they know. I mean, there are master guys in this room. There are senior youths in this room. And the beautiful thing about being a Christian who happens to be seven day Adventist is that we are built with tools when it comes to youth ministries that when we go into the world and it's nothing for us to stand in front of our classroom and make a speech because we're used to it on 13th Sabbath when we were kids. We're used to it for youth days. The point I'm making is we have been grounded with a lot of church stuff. We have the almost experience, Abba. Some of us are just proximate to you. But you've been revealing yourself all this time. And so, Father, your amazing love is this. Your word declares in Romans chapter 2, verse 8, that the goodness of God leads us to repentance, which is the Holy Spirit. How do we know it's the Spirit? How do we know the goodness is the Spirit? It's because Galatians 5.22 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and goodness. And so as we started the word tonight, we end it tonight. Proverbs 23, verse 26, your word says, My son, my daughter, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. And the beautiful thing, Abba, is you do not leave us to ourselves to bring ourselves to you. You literally, like a perfect usher, you usher us to you. And you help us. And as Lydia was by the water and Paul came to preach to her, the Bible, see, words matter, Father, thank you. The Bible specifically, without a mistake, Paul writes specifically, God opened Lydia's heart. And so, Father, tonight, help Gasmere as they fill in the blank of their own names. Help me daily open my heart to you. Let me submit to you and to your authority and to your will because you are the Lord. Help me to trust you. Help me to trust you when I do not know what's going on. And again, I wish it was simple just to say I love you, to be saved. And so, Lord, thank you for the fact that you sacrificed all for us. So daily we have to make expenses in our lives to reflect the love to you. So as I end this prayer, Abba, you said in 1 John 3.20, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Thank you for the heart transplant. Thank you for your heart. We love you. Why? Because you first love us. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody who believes, why don't you put your hands, hands together and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I know we kept you guys late. I'm so sorry, but thank you. Round of applause for Karen for running the show. Because I was like, God, I I could plan this, but please don't make me host. So um, thank you, God. Thank you, Karen. She was very willing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Gasmia. Thank you so much, Queen. You guys came on at all the young kids. I know I'm so sorry. You guys <laughs> gonna go home late, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to Horeb, thank you, Shiloh, thank you, Hebron.
on. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everybody um, for coming. Um, as you mentioned, this program, we're trying to do more programs, but this one is gonna be a quarterly one, so the next one will be in July, the next Friday now. Um, but one thing I do wanna say, um, I wanna, not to put Shannon on the, on the spot, um, but I'm floored because we've been trying to plan this program for, for a while, like we had to keep postponing, like, and I was just like, God, we're just trying to plan this program for you. Um, why are you rejecting this? What's going on? Um, and when he said he'll leave the 99 and go for that one, I really believe, Shannon, this was not a coincidence. This program was not supposed to happen today, and the fact that you were just able to walk in, that that is beyond powerful. I'm never gonna forget that. I, floored. Um, so praise God for that. I pray you could come back. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you so much. Have a happy Sabbath. We have small refreshments for you downstairs in the community center. Um, and watch out for more programs and have a have a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you again. Turn the pencils, please, up here. And again, refreshments downstairs in the community center.